All right, next up, we have the legend Asri Arneson from uh, the European side of things, who will be presenting on the Huntington's Disease Clinical Advisory Board. Asri, do you wanna share your slides? Yes, thank you, Mustafa, for having me and inviting me to talk about this uh, exciting work we are doing together with HDO uh, and, um, and also the International Huntington Association. So let me share my screen because I have some slides. Um, it's really a pity I can't see the participants because I feel a bit, I don't know, lonely back here with you, Mustafa, but I'll do my best and yeah, hopefully there will come up some uh, comments or questions or whatever so we can have some that's kind that's, of conversation. Yeah, exactly. that's the nature of Zoom conferences. You can't see who you're talking to, unfortunately. No. Yeah. It's a bit strange it's, to talk to yeah. your own screen, but nevertheless, yeah. Yeah. it's fine. Uh, okay, we're reaching out, yes. So uh, my name is Astrid Arnesen, as you said, um, and I'm president of the European Huntington Association. And I have been engaged in the community because I'm from a Huntington family. Um, my mother had Huntington's disease and passed away many years ago. And I have a, a sister in, the, in late stage and my younger brother died with Huntington's disease a few years ago. So this has been part of my life forever. And it's really a, a, an honor and a, and a great pleasure to be part of, of the community. And, uh, and it's so rewarding and, and uh, it's a fantastic community to be part of. And this HD cab is one step also uh, further in, in that respect in, from my uh, point of view. So uh, CAB Community Advisory Board. And what is it? So we represent the community, the Huntington community. And we give advice uh, to uh, people like Shelley or Wave and other industry partners who are developing drugs, or it could be also academics or others doing research in Huntington's disease to, to promote and, and have better knowledge about how to treat and care for Huntington patients. Um, because in order to have treatment developed, we need as a community to support that and contribute. Uh, because without us, there will be no treatment. And that's just a fact. And that's why we, uh, we uh, did uh, establish this initiative or, or entity called HDCAB. And we did so, as I mentioned, uh, together with um, HDO and the International Huntington Association. And that was important to find these brilliant partners, I would say, because we went, wanted to make sure that we represent the entire globe, the, the, the community all over the world. And these are the best partners to ensure that we can, can manage to do so. And we started this work just, it's, it's less than a year ago, so it's really young, uh, but we are already proud of what we have achieved and, and where we are and the group of people we have brought together. So what is it? What is it we are doing? Uh, we, we want to make sure that HDCAB is, a, is an organized way for the community to be a, a voice and a representative voice. And with that, I mean that we want to make sure, as I said, that we have not just North America and Europe who are traditionally really well represented, I have to say, uh, in, in most connections where Huntington research is being discussed or, or developed, but really to have also uh, Arabic speaking countries, uh, the Asian uh, communities and uh, African communities and, uh, and South America included in this broad and Australia and New Zealand, of course, also. Um, so, um, so uh, and also really to have generations uh, represented because you all know that being a young child or adolescent in a family with Huntington's disease is different and you struggle with different things and challenges uh, if you, or compared to if you are 60 like me soon and, and you have lived through uh, really a journey and, and processed so much. So we wanted that spectrum also in terms of generations being, uh, being uh, represented in this advisory board. So we invited team members 
from all over the world, the three organizations based on who we know and who we thought could be, you know, willing to take on and able to take on because this, this takes some time and, and, and you need to be able to dedicate a part of your, your energy and time to, to take part in this. Um, but we invited people and, and uh, we have been very lucky and have been able to put together a wonderful team, I would say. Um, it's also uh, important that you know that I will show you a photo of, of the current team. So you can see they have a different hairstyle and different ages and, uh, and all that. So uh, we are really uh, feel that we have achieved a group with, with a lot of different perspectives and bringing their different values to the table, uh, which is really what we want to make sure. So these are um, going to serve for a period of time, so about three years or something like that. That's our intention. So some will rotate off and some will rotate in. So there are opportunities for people if you are really interested, uh, you can give a sign to, to one of us in HDO or me or, or whoever, uh, and we will put you on a list because we will need, need new members um, uh, as time pass by. But this is the current team and uh, and we are super pleased to have to have them on board and why why is this team uh, important they are all huntington family members so some of them are at risk some of them are have tested and know if they are, have the huntington gene or if they have tested negative for the gene and some of them are partners to a person with huntington's disease uh, or a mother or a father of somebody with, uh, with Huntington's disease. And also there is a couple here who had a child with uh, passed away now with, with the juvenile onset of Huntington's disease. So, um, so we, we cover quite a lot of what Huntington's disease means. So, but why? What is it we can bring that that's not really already done because a lot is done, but being a family member means that you really have a unique expertise. And sometimes when you live in a situation like you do, if you're born into a Huntington family or if you have a, a, a partner or a close friend with Huntington's disease or affected by Huntington's, you don't really understand the uniqueness that lived experience represent. But we have experienced when we meet researchers, uh, um, people from the industry, pharma industry, who are really very good in kind of what's the science and the, and the theoretical part of Huntington's disease. But to really understand what does it mean in a person's life, in a family's life, in the lifespan, that's, that's not something you can expect. And, and, they don't know. To a large extent, they don't know because they can't know before we tell them. So that's why it's so important to have that uh, valued. I know a lot about Huntington's disease simply because I've lived with it through my mother and my sister and brother and my own situation. And that's really unique expertise. It's expertise. No doubt about it. Um, and you also know that HD family members, a lot of us tend to be very silent and deal with things the best we can on our own. Um, but we need to make our voice heard and HDCAB is really a kind of a tool, an instrument where we organize ourselves and, and make it possible to have that voice heard loud and clear because we possess a unique expertise and we have the unique ex uh, position. It's, it's about us developing drug and, and provide treatment is about us and our family members. So of course, we should read out loud and clear what it is we need and uh, what researchers or regulators or whoever needs to know to really do whatever they can best possible to, to have drugs coming as fast as possible but also at a quality and an, in a way that ensures uh, the best for the community as such. So we want to influence really the decisions. And honestly, we had an, a, an ad board with a, with a, with a, 
with a company a few months ago and and they said after have listened to people telling about how they were affected by Huntington's disease themselves they told us oh my gosh you brought up so much knowledge that we gave um, went back to our offices and reformulated some of our questions and ideas and thoughts about what what Huntington's disease is about and how we should best uh, develop our Huntington program. Um, so, um, so we want to. That's that's. Then we achieved what we wanted to because we think we bring something valuable and important, and and it should influence the decisions that are being made um, in terms of research and drug development. But not only that. HD Cab is about. I know uh, you know uh, facilitating and do whatever we can to accelerate the development of drugs and and treatments. But we also want to influence decisions on access. Because for a long time, uh, when I came into this community, uh, I thought that, oh my gosh, when we will have a drug approved, it will more or less automatically get to patients. But as I've understood and learned by other disease groups and seen how things are working, I understand that's not the case necessarily. So uh, we want to make sure that HDCAB also focus on what can the drug developers do to make sure that they get the drug in Russia and in, in, in all countries, even if they haven't done trials there maybe. Uh, but we want definitely patients to have the drug if it's being approved. Um, and then we may talk to, to decisions makers, to regulators, I don't know what we will do, but, but we will definitely have that on our, our agenda and, and make our voice heard because there is no difference in a patient in, I don't know, Mali or uh, or uh, Venezuela or uh, or Australia or America, everybody should have the treatment, um, or we will fight together at least to make that happen as much as as we can. And in order to be able to do these things and to really be a good voice and to influence decisions in in all different levels, we need to know how things are working. Knowledge is really power. So we train, we learn about the regulatory pathways, we learn about how is what's really a good clinical trial, what's good conduct, how are patients being, should patients, participants be best taken care of and all these things uh, because uh, we need to know and understand in order to be able to really advocate and have a have a relevant uh, voice and, and try to influence the best we can. So um, the group that you saw the photos from um, in a previous slide uh, met at a kickoff meeting September 4th last year. Uh, and it was an amazing uh, experience to meet from all over the world, like you do here in, in the HDO conference also. It's, it's fascinating. And one of the really good things from the pandemic that we have been trained and, and uh, appreciate being together online, uh, despite the geographical and, and time zone differences. Uh, so we met September 4th, and then we had some trainings with good um, scientists and telling us about trials and, and, and what we should you know, keep an eye on. And then in, I uh, think it was October, yes, uh, we had an advisory board with PTC. Uh, they are early in their program with Huntington's disease. So they asked us to just give a very kind of a, it was a broad headline, tell us how does HD affect you or what is the most you know, um, relevant things in relation to HD for you. And all these people here from HD uh, Cab, not all the 25 we have because that's too many. We were about 10. And then PTC were about, I don't know, eight, I think, people from the company. And all these 10 Cab members, they told in, within the time frame of five, five minutes what they wanted to bring to the table to PTC and let them know about what HD is for, for them and their family. And, and they went back and said, uh, you have really given us a lot 
of things to think about because there are many things you told us that we haven't been thinking about. So, so that was really a, a valuable and, and nice, nice experience. And I just want to make you aware that we have a web page. I will not touch my. <laughs> it's it's hdcab dot. Maybe you can put it in the in the chat, Mustafa, for me. hdcab.org. Really easy. hdcab with small letters and then point org. Uh, where we present who we are, what we do, and we, there is also a calendar showing uh, what's coming up next in terms of some internal trainings, uh, but also the, um, the advisory board. So you can pay attention if you want to. And also, of course, the contact information is there. Uh, we have a very nice um, operational team led by Tina Leggett. Uh, she's based in Switzerland and she's helping us uh, organizing all the practicalities that comes with this, uh, with this work. So, um, so that's a good way to get to know us a little bit better if you want to. Um, and then we have um, from here. You know, when we started and we were doing a little video, uh, Svein Olaf from the International Huntington Association, what is it we want to achieve with, with HDCAB? And he said, I want to turn hope into reality. And I thought that was a really great uh, quote because that's, that's exactly what we want to do. This is exciting times. So many are working on promising and exciting things that ultimately I, I have to say I, I'm convinced that some of them not all but some of them will succeed and end up as an approved drug and we will be there uh, along that road and and you know uh, do whatever we can to make it happen as soon as as, as possible and uh, already end of this month we are having a new advisory board with Novartis who also have a really exciting program in Huntington's disease. So, um, so this is uh, interesting and really uh, exciting work. And that's where it ends because uh, I'll come back another time and tell you what has happened and, uh, and see, and maybe we can discuss how we can operate best together in the future with the community as such. Thank you, Astrid, for the wonderful presentation. I'm really fighting for access as well. So let's see if any questions come in. Uh, in the meanwhile, I can ask a question around cost, because we know that eventually when HD drugs hopefully come out in the next few years, what do you think will they end up costing? And is the goal of HDCAB then to fight to reduce the cost of potential HD drugs? And uh, basically, result in equitable access for a lot of people across the globe? Yes, uh, the, the short answer is yes. Of yeah. course, this is diff, diff, difficult landscape because if Unicure succeeds and, and or some of the others doing brain surgery at one shot, of course, we, we will face huge challenges in terms of just making that possible to provide brain surgery to, 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 to the large number of patients. And of course, the cost will be much higher than, for instance, uh, um, uh, the one that's going on now in third phase Prilenia, which is a, is a, is a, a pill, or a, a, will be much cheaper. So depending on what kind of, of treatment, of, obviously, will, will influence the, um, the cost. But then also, it's of course also because what we if we are really a global community fighting for each other, uh, they did that within the age community, you know, and, and they really achieved something in terms of having more uh, better access to medicines throughout the world, uh, in, at least in the long term. So, so we can influence, we cannot, you know, we are not magicians, we cannot make things happen like in a fairy tale, but, but we will do whatever we can to influence the industry, the pharma and the, and the payers, and then to find models. How can we, if, if brain injury one shot, is, is a very good treatment. Maybe we could pay, I don't know, uh, over time or something. There, there are many models being worked also together with other rare disease groups. We need to align and, and, and work together with other disease groups also to make a good model to, to ensure better access. Yeah, so is something in the works with regards to working with other rare disease groups? Because I know um, traditionally HD has been pretty insular and we sort of go our own. 
Mm. Yeah, yeah, I can only, uh, for HDO, yes, we are just being thinking about it. We haven't reached there yet because we are obviously very young mm -hmm. in a way in, in our partnership. But at the European Huntington Association, we are working a lot with the other neurological diseases, for instance, where we have a lot in common, but also um, the, the very broad rare disease umbrella organization because we need to find ways uh, in tandem with others. Mm. Yeah, there's a, actually a pretty good question, I think. What makes us sure that, uh, what makes you sure that the industry will not influence us, the advocates? Mm. They do influence us. I mean, I, I, I guess the question is about that we are bought or something or being, you know, we tell things we think they will hear, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, yeah. That's not my experience. It's not happening. This is our lives. We are talking from the bottom of our hearts what we think is important. But we influence each other as human beings. I mean, it's, it's not like we don't... Uh, you know, uh, it's it's a meeting and, and we influence each other in the sense that we listen to them and they listen to us. And that's the way it should be, in my opinion. Yeah, so I think it's the about, way to... It, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, it's about working together. Exactly, exactly what I was saying. I think the way to look at it for anyone listening is as more of a partnership and then coming to a, like sort of a compromise where you have a lot of access for patients around the world but also because the pharma companies put in a lot of time, money and effort into it, that they get some of that back as well. Exactly. And that's why these kind of initiatives where we are bringing things together, we are organizing, we are getting to know each other, we train, we empower ourselves to be that you know, strong voice, but as you say, a partner uh, at the same level as, as other uh, stakeholders in that. Yeah. So. There's uh, hopefully more questions coming in. Um, let me see if I have any more. Yeah, so if anyone wants to get involved, how do they reach out to HDCAB? Do they just go on the website, email Tina? What's the best way to get involved? Yes, uh, because right now, I think I stopped sharing my screen. Uh, right now, uh, we, um, we have the number, more or less, at least the number of participants, unless you come from a really uh, part of the world where, where we have few, very few representatives like Central Africa would be very nice to have, or some maybe some Asian countries, um, unless you are from those countries. Right now, we are happy with the size of group we have, but please, if you are interested in a longer term uh, run, uh, write to Tina. Um, you find her email on the on the CAB, uh, HDCAB webpage, and we will put you on a list and get back to you because already next year we will need to you know to fill in uh, with new people so so please uh, we are very open to to hear about people who are interested yeah so you mentioned uh, no, uh, novartis being the next ad board how does it work do companies reach out to you or just hd cab offer their services or do you just leverage yes. your contact yeah. so both both ways in a way because both I and the International Association and HDO are in touch with, with many of the, of the pharma companies who are doing projects in Huntington's disease. And then we tell about HDCAP. Um, uh, so we tell about us and they come to us. Uh, so it goes kind of both ways. And then we together with them, Tina, I work very closely with Tina on this to prepare an agenda because generally they have um, multiple questions too much. It's about a, a two or three hour session and it will be online still for a while, I think. Um, and then we, we try to, to, to settle down the agenda to be really uh, at a level where we can add value. Instead of trying to cover a lot, we cover less and, and do it well. Uh, and then we prepare uh, the team members who are going to be in that ad board, and then we do it, and then we have a debrief and we, we provide uh, feedback to the, uh, to, the, um, to the company who have uh, approached us with it with a minutes yeah makes sense let's see so folks if you want to ask any questions to us three now is the time um what else so in terms of the spread you mentioned that there's quite a bit of diversity do we cover all continents so far 
Yeah, yeah, don't we? <laughs> we have Australia, we have yeah. Asia, uh, we have Africa, South and North Africa, and uh, yeah, I think we do actually. Yeah, South yeah. America yeah. and North America, yeah. I think it's super important to have like a global perspective because as we know, HD is a global disease and traditionally there's been a lack of access in certain countries versus the Western hemisphere. Exactly. And and what you know what I've learned when I get to know more people from different parts of the world is that there are really so many good people and resources, many places. And, and we should really, you know, encourage and help each other to come forward because in India, in Pakistan, in, in, in the Arabic speaking countries, there are really, you know, a lot of good work going on. And, and we just need to help focus and, and, and get more attention to Huntington's disease and, and, and add in. It's not that everybody, every clever head is in North America or Europe, <laughs> far from it. So. Totally. All right, I think there are no more questions. Ask for any final words for the issue community. You've been involved in quite a while. You've seen the development going from the early clinical trials to now that we have what six or seven going on at the same time. Yes, it's as I said, it's it's really exciting times, and 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 we have yeah at least six or seven. I think we have more even uh, uh, if you count the really early stages of projects. And and I'm I'm convinced that that there will be <clears throat> treatment coming to the market, coming to patients within the next I don't know few years. We have been waiting for a long time, and it's it's taking more time all the way than we thought but but still i'm really 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 hopeful and and realistic i think that that uh, time will change we will have more and better treatments coming up our way but but it, it it's demanding to develop these drugs we, we need to keep on working yeah, absolutely all right thank you astri again for taking time out of your sunday and talking thank to you so much for inviting me it's really an honor to be here it's yeah, uh, yeah. great yeah all right all right, everyone, I think that's the end of the session for today in on track two. In 15 minutes or so, you can take a bit of a break. Charles Sabine will be talking about hope in HD and how there's always hope and brighter things to look forward to tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for attending. And thanks again, Astri and Shelley as well.